I'm Julie Ryder, the discoverer of the Montana Megalis, and we're here at the Tizer Dolmen. The Tizer Dolmen is a freestanding rock that fits the classical description of a dolmen, which is two uprights and one tabletop on top. The beautiful thing about the Tizer Dolmen is it's set on a mountain with a base underneath it. And that is a, poly that is a polygonal set square separate blocks that form the base. In the back there's a buttress that holds it to the side of the mountain because the weight is on the back of the dolmen, otherwise it may come tumbling down. According to Andrew Barker, this is an extremely unique design that they have not found other places in the world so far. The, above the Tizer dolmen is a sphinx. It is an acoustic chamber, much like the, the hypogeum in Malta, sound chambers that go deep underground. So I'm here with Dr. Sam from Bosnia, who does experiments on dol dolmens and finds megalithic sites and tests them all over the world. So Dr. Sam, what do you think about the Tizer Dolmen? Well, I think that I am very grateful that you and your team guided us here. We are almost at the top of this hill, and then we can see those two uprights, two megaliths, and one on the top. And you are right, this is the classical case of dolmen. The simplest, though, two vertical, one horizontal. Sometimes you can find them three vertical, one horizontal, sometimes five vertical, two horizontal, and so on. And you find them all over the planet, from Sardinia to Vietnam, South Korea has most of them. They have almost half of all dolmens on the planet, for some reason. They are in Africa, they are in Pakistan, they are in Bangladesh, India, different countries. Why would some, somebody do something like that? The sincere answer would be, we don't know. The same thing goes for the original builders, those who placed them, like this one over here. How do we know that it's been placed? So we have two pieces, two megaliths. They are megaliths because they fulfill uh, properties of megaliths. They are over one ton, and I'll talk about it. And uh, you see when it breaks, it breaks vertically here. It does not happen in nature it breaks horizontally. Why? Because they are the product of the sedimentation. That's how they break. Since we can see the break here and there, it means that originally when this stone, and this is grey granite, was formed, it was formed in horizontal layers. So somebody moved them for 90 degrees. And then placed that big block on the top. No way that Mother Nature could roll this block from somewhere higher up and then it, it got placed over there. So it's been placed by intelligent hands. I've done some energy measurements and these are the results. Temperature today is very pleasant, 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Here in Montana during the fall we got blessed. Humidity very low, 20 degrees weather is sunny, visibility clear, so we can see everything around us. Negative ions are in the range from 50 to 900. They are beneficial if higher than 5000. This is not the case here. And this is rarely the case anywhere in the world. The highest quantities in Bosnia, Bosnian pyramid tunnels, 20,000 to 100,000, sometimes even more mm. than one time at the Great Zimbabwe just before the thunderstorm started we had also 100,000 and then Slovenia 5,000 near one lake and so on. Usually the mountains are 500 to 1,000 so here we have 50 to 900 positive 30 to 1,400 so nothing specially there. Electromagnetic radiation the one that is harmful to us there is none meaning it's pleasant to stay here. Life energy or organ energy, which gets measured by the instrument called experimental life energy meter, 
Uh, it's showing also just the regular results. It's about 30% on the scale from 0 to 100. Like in the city, Montana, 20, here is 30. What does it mean life energy or organ energy or chi? What this instrument measures, it actually measures our ability to receive harmful electromagnetic field. So higher the ability, our organ or life energy is higher. Rather simple. People are on this scale from 0 to 100 from 55 to 100. For example, football players or tennis players, you know, when they are in training, playing, they are about 90, 95, 98. All other people from 55, and it doesn't have anything to do with the age. It has to do with the way we live with our, with our immunity and so on. So 30% is good, nothing special. Still, we don't have these healing properties. Then, I measure magnetic field. Magnetic field on a scale with uh, micro Tesla is the good field is from 25 to 65. If it is above 65, 70, 100, for example, 2 or 300, it means you are in close proximity of some very bad machines, like in a hospital, mm -hmm. CT, stuff like that. They have about 300. And if you are real close to them, it's about 1,000. You go there, it's probably worse than potential disease that you have. But that's another story. Here we have 51 to 56 with an uh, average of 54, which is rather good. I've seen places exactly in the middle of the scale, let's say about 43, 45, that would be ideal. 54 is still good. Ultrasound, if we can see regular distances showing the ultrasound at the same frequencies, then we could conclude that we have some type of the machine that generates this ultrasound. This is not the case. We do have presence of ultrasound, but it is irregular. Infrasound, similar thing. This is very, very deep sound. Sometimes from the places like megalithic sites, it's very busy telling us that something is happening either below them or inside. This is not the case. It's not busy. Most of the time there is no signal for infrasound. Now, Two things that are really the most impressive. The first one is the orientation of the dolmen. If it was natural, Mother Nature does not make orientation exactly to the cardinal points. And cardinal points on this planet are east, west, north and south. Mm -hmm. What we have here, we have exact north-south orientation. Now we are looking at the sun. It's just past noon. Sun is exactly to the south and you see the orientation to the south. Now, this is not the orientation to some of our uh, cosmic bodies and their important dates, like summer solstice or fall or spring equinox or winter solstice, like the case of the sage wall, which is oriented towards the sunrise and sunset during the winter solstice. Here we have simple orientation north-south, which in reality is not so simple, because you have to know where is your cosmic north, where is your exact south. So whoever plays those two big and the smaller megalith, that's the knowledge that they possessed. So if they know exact north and south, then they knew that our planet is a spherical, it has its cosmical north. Maybe they knew even about the northern star. So it tells us that this place has some astronomical features, features of the astronomical observatory. And finally, about the megaliths themselves. Now, whether we had two blocks and somebody placed them separately or they had them here and then they have them somehow broken hard to say but we can see nicely that they fit 
if they move them, place them here. If they were able to move them and rotate for 90 degrees, probably it wouldn't be a big deal for them to place them separately, one after another. Now, when I did the measurement, this is what the results shown. Let's call this block number one, number one, to my left. So number one in uh, European uh, metric measurements, it's 130 centimeters. The height is 550 or five and a half meter. And the width is 370 or 3.7 meters. In order to calculate the mass, what we do, we multiply the width, the height, and the thickness. 130 times 550 times 370, it's 26.455 cubic meters. Specific weight of the granite, about 3. So the mass of this block is 79 tons. One block. One block. The block number two, with the similar measurements, 80 times 370 centimeters times 550, 16.3 cubic meter or 49 tons, almost 50 tons, almost 80, almost 50. The one on the top, 220 times 140 times 250, 7.7 .7 cubic meters or 23 tons. Mm. If we are to lift 23 tons, on the top of those two, you know, which are 5.5 meters or about 18, 19 feet, you need to have lifting equipment. In this particular case, it should be crane. Forklifts, they don't have their forks, you know, that can reach far enough. So we, our civilization of 21st century, would use cranes. Around we can see remnants of cranes or any other lifting equipment. And we see many places with dolmens, with the blocks being moved. You would have a lot of pieces of the equipment if they would think the same way we think. The way we think is the following. You have 80 tons mass. The problem with 80 tons is the gravitational force. So what we do we can't lift 80 tons, we can't lift 800 kilos. Some of us can lift maybe 80 kilos. So what we do, we, you know, apply our force, which is bigger than 80 kilos. Let's say our force is maybe 100 kilos. The same we do with our technology. In order to move 80 ton block, we invent crane, which is, let's say, 100 ton capacity. So our way, fighting the gravitational force, is the most primitive one. Mm -hmm. So we apply more power, a bigger tonnage capacity, to move 80 tons. Is that the only way to move the weight, to move the mass? It's not. Our problem is, they teach us that everything we do is the only way. Well, it is not. If we think about this, the problem we have is the gravitational force. If we could find a way to neutralize the gravitational force, we would be able to move those blocks with two fingers. So, how do you neutralize gravitational force? Today, we don't know. They don't teach us in schools. However, there are some communities that they do know for example, Tibetans. What they would do when they were building their temples with two or five ton blocks, instead of dragging them all the way to the top of the mountain, or, you know, halfway, what they would do, they would start singing and playing their, you know, classical Tibetan instruments, producing very high frequency sounds, which would neutralize gravitational force, and then the block would start going up, levitate. So, as a matter of fact, we need to discover the levitation frequency, and then we would be able to move blocks. Is it how they did it in the past? Maybe. Not on one, but on many places. Is there an electromagnetic frequency that can neutralize gravitational force? 
Probably yes. It seems that NASA has been doing experiments for decades now. So we just need to open our mind and then we will realize there are different ways to transport, to lift, to build. And once we do that, we will have better understanding of the original builders. They were thinkers. How they were getting their information from some energy, spiritual field, from Akasha, from, we don't know. But it seems that they were able to get those information in other ways that somebody else teaches them. Is it possible that in these vast areas of Montana and the United States, mound builders and before them megalithic builders were teaching native people about what they were doing, how they were doing, explaining them how to use and what to learn from those sites, it's very possible. So I can understand that Native Americans consider all those lands sacred because it is connected to their elders, to their, you know, people who lived here thousands of years back. So, what we have here in Montana, what we've been showing the last couple of days, is extremely intriguing and extremely old. This past the known civilization during the last civilization cycle, which is the time from 12,000 years onward. So in that time we had Mesolithic and Neolithic cultures, 12,000, 10,000, 8,000, 5,000 years back. They were not producing those megaliths. Even though we did have one megalithic windows happening from 5 to 8,000 years back, Stonehenge and some others. This is much older than that. It goes way back, maybe tens of thousands of years. What was happening during the time before time? Mm. Or during the time beyond time? We don't know. Who were those builders? Why they were doing this? These are not classical homes with windows and doors and the roofs. They are not. People were not living here. What did they use this for? Astronomy can be partial, minor description and explanation. Did they focus some energies here? It's possible at the time when our mother planet was much stronger. Yes, it is possible. But the real purpose, the major purpose, I don't see that we're going to get to it in the years to come. Because our concept of energy, concept of living, concept of eating, concept of breathing, concept of communicating is so much different than theirs. Mm -hmm. Were they able to communicate by their thoughts, telepathy, and then execute the structures they wanted to build, it is very possible. Since they don't teach us in schools, our educational system is so poor, our parents, they don't know, they are not the real teachers. How can we know? How can we teach the future generations? The only way is to combine physical with spiritual reality. Our five physical senses with very spiritual senses. And then we might be able to find out more about those structures. And it seems to me that the last big catastrophe, the end of the last ice age, 11,700 years back, produced such huge, powerful tsunamis. 1,000 feet, sometimes even 5,000 feet in height. And that force destroyed 99% of the civilizations that lived before. What we see here are just the remnants. But the remnants, like this one, which should tell us that yes, we can learn a lot from the ancients. So that is exactly why you just explained it to me. I had this epiphany as you were talking about the acoustics. Above us is the Tizer Acoustic Sphinx. The very first time I brought a group here, there were three women from the Haida tribe, Haida medicine women, very powerful women. 
and my friend and I were standing right here and all of a sudden we heard this incredible tones come through the dolmen that almost knocked us over. So we go running up to the Tizer Springs and said, what just happened? Right? With the group, there was a man who's got this incredibly trained voice. He sounds like a didgeridoo. I've never heard such a low tone. And he'd been being trained by one of our musicians here to use his voice. He was also a yoga trainer, so he knew the breathing and the exercises. And he climbs down inside a side of the Tizer Acoustic Chamber and he makes this sound. Everyone fell to the ground. We could not stand up. When we were within this channel, the people around us couldn't figure out what happened. We were right in the channel, they weren't. I've experienced that a second time. Two times in my life I've experienced that. You fall to the ground, you cannot stand up, and your whole body is like in this ecstatic state. I've never done drugs, but this is what I imagine it'd be like. I mean, you're just in this ecstatic state, and you're kind of rolling around on the ground and just... <laughs> I can't even describe this feeling. The second time I experienced it was on the Navajo, where the elder stood in an acoustic chamber, and he started toning, and he sounded one sound, and it echoed and made a harmonic to the second tone, and when he heard the third harmonic to the third tone, same thing happened. We couldn't stand up. He hit those tones, and with his voice that echoed. So it's three different tones that almost echo, make a harmonic. Then we started finding these beautiful bar cold doors, and when you apply sound to that, it makes the same tone. The next day, after this happened in the Navajo, um, this man was standing on a mound of crystals. And I walked up and I said, that was the original sound of the making. He said, you recognized it? Oh yeah. <laughs> I've heard it in my dreams. I've heard it. I recognize this sound. It's how particles come into being. It's how implant matter becomes excrement matter. It's what forms the creation. The next day, I heard in my mind, come, follow me. And as I followed him, seven other women just got up and followed him, not a sound said, into a place, into like an ancient well that looks very much like the Ankhs, where we recreated the world each year. Each year they recreate the world in a new way, with crystals, with these sounds. It's the sound of the making. And anti-gravity, you could not maintain your gravity. You could not remain upright when the sound was being played. So thank you for Wonderful. that. I've been so curious about what happened. <laughs> I think you just explained it. Okay, thanks a lot. <laughs>